Well, hello guys. I think it's going to work here. For a minute, it uh, shut me off and had a moment of panic. And uh, then I've got it back on there, I think. So I think we're good. I think we're good, guys. Now, let me make sure, take a little peek here. Make sure everybody can get on. I've had a lot of uh, messages and things to make sure that everybody can get on. So we want to make sure everybody gets here. And uh, hi, Sherry. I'm going to watch it also on my phone because it just seems to work better sometimes like that. And that way uh, I might be able to see your comments also. Hope so anyway. think so maybe get all the technology stuff here out of the way right guys and then we can have some fun okay good I think I've got it on there now and uh, let me know if you can see and hear me okay please somebody uh, and then uh, that's always a, a great indication things are going to go real well So I am Vicki Jean with Vicki Jean Wilson Art, in which I teach you how to paint and do simple sketching to create art that you love. So we are going to do the old red truck tonight, and uh, it should be a lot of fun. So uh, hopefully everybody has a good time, and uh, we just have a good Christmas time together. I've got my Christmas shirt on. Do you guys have Christmas shirts on or anything? Or PJs on? Do you have anything like that going on? Uh, in my membership group, we uh, did a paint night with our PJs. And uh, it was it was fun. It was a lot of fun. So if you are here, say hello, please. And uh, we will uh, get this show on the road here in just a few minutes. Make sure that you have your... Uh, your paints that you need and your brushes that you need and I'm just kind of tweaking here just a little bit here to see uh, the best way that you guys can see me right I hope so I've already got Amelia she's already commented reindeer she's she's on it she's on it so in the comment section if you would like to have this tracer right here of this fun and cute little reindeer with the little uh, lights around it, comment reindeer. Whoever comments reindeer, I will send that to you after this is over. Give me a few minutes. <laughs> after this is over, we will, uh, we will do this. So anybody who comments reindeer, if you've not already received that and would like it, and it is your, uh, your tracer. So I've already traced it all out for you. Tonight we are not having a tracer, as you've noticed. I've had a lot of questions about that. But I decided I would teach you how to do this step by step without the tracer. So that is why we are uh, not having that tonight. We're just not having it, not a bit. So I'm getting my paint out here on my palette. And uh, while we're kind of waiting just a few minutes, make sure everybody can get in here, get on here. And Make sure the links work and all that. Sometimes that can be a little tricky, a little tricky, but it looks like we're still going strong here. I hope. Make sure you comment to keep those comments going, please. I'm pounding away. I've got some green paint and it is getting towards the end of the bottle. Uh, so I'm trying to get some of it out. Uh, I, I don't waste anything, guys. I don't waste a thing. I don't know about you, but I don't waste a thing. So uh, make sure that you are commenting, please, and uh, tell me what's going on with you tonight. Tell me. Okay, now I've got it live on my phone. I thought, uh-oh, it stopped, it stopped. What's going on here? So you guys should have some paints out now. You should have uh, your green. You should have red. 
You should have white and black and a little bit of brown. If you want to have the brown in the bottom, right through here. Now, like I mentioned in one of my videos, you could also uh, just have snow all the way here. You know, this this one I made kind of looked like it was kind of going down a dirt road, uh, but you just, uh, with snow in the front here, in the foreground, and uh, so you guys just do what you want to do. I always tell everybody, this is what I say, you are the artist. I'm going to teach you how to do it like this, and you change it up how you want. If you want a different color truck, if you want a, uh, a white tree instead of a green tree, whatever you want, you're going to get to do it tonight. But I will teach you how to do it like this. So, um, hi, Guadalupe. And I'm, uh, Janice is in PJs. Awesome, awesome. I'm looking here real see. Oh, oh gosh, Angela. That doesn't, that doesn't sound like fun with strip. No way, no way. And Amber's watching. Um... Okay, Anna, you're here. Good, good, good. Uh, Asher, super windy here. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of, it's windy here too. It's not as bad as it was the other day, of course. But, um, yeah, it's it's kind of windy. So I hope the, you know, everything goes, the streaming goes good. On my end, it looks okay, so I hope so. Uh, hi Janice and Sherry. Okay, Paula. And remember the reindeer behind you. I see some of you that's putting that down. So if you put reindeer, if you're just jumping on, if you put uh, reindeer in the comments, I will send you this guy right here. And he's just a tracer. You can do it for yourself. You can do it with your kids. You can do it with your grandkids. It's a fun little guy. And, uh, you know, kids love this, and of course he's got the lights around him. He's got the big antlers, and he's kind of off-centered, so he's kind of a fun one to do. So if you want to uh, put that in your uh, comments, and then uh, give me some time this evening after we get done, and I will send that to you guys. So thank you everybody for being here tonight, and I wanted to give uh, people who have not had a chance to paint with me, or those who have had a chance to paint with me, I wanted to give you a free Christmas gift. Uh, I love Christmas, and I know what it's all about, and it, part of that all about is to give. And so I want to give you a free paint night. So tonight we are going to do that, right? And um, I am going to change the uh, scene here to an overhead camera, and that way you can see, you should be able to see my paints, my brushes that I'm using, and uh, I will position the canvas to kind of go in there too, and you should be able to see everything. Well, let's move that, that around. That might help a little bit. And see, here is the painting that we will be doing tonight. And here is the main tools you need, guys. Now, I told you, you either need a pencil and an eraser. Uh, are you guys still seeing me? Something just popped up. <laughs> um, not sure what that means. Can you guys see me? Let me know. Yes, okay, thank you. Because it just had the strangest little pop-up on here. Okay, Shelly, okay, great. I apparently can't see it. <laughs> so, it said I was blocked. I don't know what I said. Maybe I said Christmas. <laughs> Are you not allowed to say that? That's, oh my, we'll have some issues with that then. Uh, okay, good, good, good. I've never had that before. I don't know what that was about. So as long as you guys can see me, let's make sure you can see the overhead and you can see me now too. Okay, great, and you can hear me. I don't know what that was about, guys. There's always a, There's always something going on, always. So anyway, here's the brushes we need. Uh, well, we said we need a pencil and a eraser. You also, I mentioned that you can have some chalk too, if you have some chalk to do the sketching. And I teach you easy sketching, guys. So don't worry about this. I get a lot of people who are um, uh, concerned with it because they might not feel confident in uh, tracing or they might not even feel confident 
in uh, doing a uh, sketch, a simple sketch, but I, I promise you, you guys can do this. Okay, here's the three main brushes that I will be using tonight. I'm going to be using a half inch flat brush, and I know it's flat because it's flat on the end, right? I'm going to use a round, a small round brush. And this is a, I didn't really, this is a number three, so it's not real fine, but it's a, it's kind of a medium range. And I'm going to be using this liner. This is a zero brush, but it's a liner, and as you get it wet, let me show you what happens. See, when you dip it in the water, it makes a really nice point when you get it into the paint. So therefore, you can do any kind of small detail work with that. And then, if you want to do any of the uh, lettering, uh, you can do it. If you don't feel confident to do it with your liner brush, you can also do it with a Sharpie, which is so much easier, right? This is a thin Sharpie, a fine point, and here's a wide point. Um, you know, by the time I get done painting, I will probably grab a Sharpie, too. <laughs> Why not, right, guys? Um, let me see if I can. Um, so you've got your paints, guys, and you have, well, I don't know. It says I'm blocked, so as long as you guys can see me, that's all that matters. Oh, good night. It's just always something there. Well, what I am also painting on, I am painting on my mixed media pad, guys. And um, you could either do it horizontal, right, or you can do it vertical. Now, in this case, I think I'm going to do it vertical. Whatever you have to paint with tonight, whether it is a canvas or whether it is paper or if it's wood, I will teach you and we're going to start sketching this. And it doesn't matter what size you have. We all kind of do the same thing, guys. So, as you're looking at this, we're going to start now. Now, I'm going to use pencil on mine because I think you will be able to see. Well, I know you couldn't see the white chalk, but I have colored chalk too. But I know you'd be able to see it better with a pencil. So, we're going to start first. And we need to lay down the background colors, right? So, as you see, about the bottom or the top half... Uh, I have got just a hodgepodge of a blue here, right? It's a wash. And then the bottom half, I've got some brown going on all the way towards the bottom. So I'm going to show you how to do it like this. If you want to do it different, of course, that's up to you. So I'm going to take my half-inch brush. I'm going to dampen it in water and kind of blot it on the towel a little bit. Now, whether you're using the paper or whether you're using uh, the canvas or whatever, it's basically the same things. So I'm going to blot, but I have quite a bit of paint or water in my brush, though. And I'm coming over here, and I'm just barely getting my brown on my brush. And I'm going to start at the bottom here. And what I want is a very light, light, light bottom half. Of brown. It's nothing fancy. I'm just coming across. I'm just brushing. I might not even want it the same direction. And you're just going across. Just go across. If it gets too dark, add some water. This is acrylic paint and the way to use acrylic paint and to thin it out is with water. We were using oils and we couldn't do that. This is acrylic. Just kind of get it the way you like it. Now see it's got a little bit of a uh, texturing look right through here. I like that part. If I want to add a little bit more brown to it in other places, I can do that. Just put my brush in the brown, kind of come here and there. I don't want it real smooth, and I'll do it like that. Okay. Well, you know the ground's not real smooth. It's kind of bumpy sometimes, and bumpy a lot of times, actually. Okay, I'm going to leave mine just like that. I'm going to wash out my brush. And now I have got some uh, blue. 
Now I actually am using ultramarine blue, but I have got just a tiny bit because I don't want it dark blue. I want some, uh, it appeared to be like right here looking like it has some clouds. So I am getting water in my brush and I'm making my blue very thin. And I'm adding some white actually to it too. See, I'm kind of just brushing basically the same way. It's kind of dark, so I'm going to thin it out with some water. Move that over just a little bit. Now this is just a background. Don't get all edgy. If you, most of this is going to be covered up, so if you don't really like it, I mean, don't fret over this part, I guess is what I'm saying. Because it's just, you're laying down some simple color. For the background. Most of the truck is going to be shown in the little snowman. So just go across with your half inch flat. If it's too dark, like I said, grab some water on your brush and just kind of move through it. And see how it'll just kind of pick some of that color up. I'd love to know how many kids are painting. There might not be too many tonight. I don't know. If anybody has any children painting with them, let me know. This is a good one to be able to do that. Okay, see I've got some darker areas and I've got some lighter areas and I'm just perfectly happy with that. Now you're going to need to kind of just stop working this, let this dry. If you happen to have a hair dryer uh, by, close by, uh, you can uh, zap it with a hair dryer. It makes a lot of noise on my end if I do that for you guys. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of fan my pages here. Get a little dry. Acrylic, one good thing about acrylic paint, it does not take uh, long to dry. Now this type of weather, it takes a little longer. Oh, Angela, good, you've got two kids. Are they painting with you then or kind of watching? Three Littles painting here, Darshi, 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 okay. Hope I said that right. Amber's got a daughter painting. Awesome, awesome, that's great. I love it. I love it when they do that. Okay, guys, you can kind of tell uh, when uh, your page is dry or your canvas. Kind of lift it up to the light a little bit, and you can see that it's not as shiny. Also, sometimes you can tell if you use like your forefinger right here, this part, touch it, and it's uh, still a little bit cool to touch, then uh, you can tell it's not quite all the way dry. But for this guy, uh, we're not going to worry too much about it as long as it's just not sopping wet. We're going to go ahead and start uh, sketching him on here. Okay, so look, look at the shape. Anytime you think about sketching and you're trying to draw something, <clears throat> excuse me, you look at the shapes of things. So we're not going to pay attention to the tree or the snowman right now or the background you're just going to focus on this shape here of this truck right so when you're sketching uh, some people kind of start in the middle of something and sketch around it in this case i'm going to have you start down here we're going to do the tires first then we're going to do the the fender and the uh, bumper and all that stuff okay so we're gonna start at the bottom and either get you a piece of chalk 
It depends actually how uh, dark that you've done this, of course. Or get a pencil. I'm going to try it with a pencil. Now, what you normally do, guys, is when you sketch with this painting, when, if you're using a pencil, you only want to do it as dark as you can see it. You don't want it too light to where you you start out and you think, oh gosh, did the line go here or did it go there? Try to get it dark enough that you can see it, but on the other hand, you don't want it so dark that you cannot cover it up with paint. Now luckily, uh, this red will cover up pretty good, but if you had a really dark line of uh, your pencil, then you might not be able to cover it up with the gray uh, so only do it as dark as you can still see it, but um, but you want to be able to cover it up, right? Now I, on the other hand, am going to do it dark for you guys, but normally you don't want to do it this dark, okay? You don't want to do it this dark. So look at your overall size that you're painting on. You want your truck uh, kind of midway, like the middle of the truck is about midway through your painting, right? So, for example, this is an 8 by 8 canvas. If I took a ruler, it would probably be, the middle of my truck would probably be about 4 inches. I do this part here about midway, 4 inches. So, in this case that I have here, I have a 9 by 12. So, of course, the horizontal part is your 9 and this way is your 12. So I want to position my truck when I'm sketching it. I want the top of it to probably be around here and I'm going to put just like a little tick mark here. And the bottom of it, I want it down in the dirt. See, I didn't lay my truck right on top of the dirt. I got it coming back. So I want the bottom of, bottom of my truck probably around here. Okay, so that kind of gives me an idea. Now also, I want to have room for my snowman on the left hand side. So don't make your truck too wide that you don't have room for your snowman. So I'm going to put like a little circle here for my snowman. That's where he's going to be. So I know not to get over that far. Now on the other side, there's really nothing here. So you can leave as much room or as little room as you want on this side over here. Okay. So let's start. Grab your pencil or your chalk and we're going to start doing the tires and the fender here. Okay. Remember, I don't want to go all the way at the bottom. I want part of my truck in the dirt part. So let's go here. And I'm going over uh, past my snowman, and I'm going to do a line here, coming over about two to three inches, doing another line. That's going to be the bottom of my tires. Do you see that? You're going to come up about another half inch, just like that. That's my tires. Now we're just sketching. When you sketch, this is just kind of the first go round, guys. So when you see that it's not quite right, like when we get up here a little farther, you might even see me taking my eraser and changing it up a little bit. Now this is an, and this is what I titled it, the old red truck. If you don't have your lines completely straight across here, don't worry. Don't worry, guys. This is an old grandpa's or great grandpa's truck. Who's, who knows how many grandpa's truck has been driving this thing? How many grandpa's have drove it? So if you are the person who needs everything just so-so, then what you need to do is grab your ruler. If you want it, and if you've got a little OCD going on, you want it straight as a stick, then grab your ruler. I'm not going to. Or grab a straight edge or use the edge of your canvas. You can use that too for a straight edge. So I'm going to come over a little bit farther to the left of my tire. I'm going to just draw it over, 
come over a little bit more to the right. So now we've got our tires and we're coming up about a half inch and going straight across. One thing I do want to tell you though, this area right here from the top and the bottom, I want you to make sure that you have enough room to put your wording. So like in my case, I put the Wilsons. You might want to put Santa, you want to, might want whatever you want to put there, make sure that you have it wide enough here to do your lettering. Okay, how we doing guys? Find my eraser here and I'll erase that darker mark here. I don't need that anymore. Okay, we're going to go up now. So you should have your tires here. There's your fender. Now we're going to come up to the sides. The easiest way to do this is to come straight up. Now I'm going to leave a little bit overhang here. I'm going to come straight up. So about an inch, inch and a quarter maybe, depending on your size that you're that you're painting on. If you've got a small, tiny four by four, you have to, just like I said a while ago, make room for your snowman, make room for the top of your truck, you know, and your tree. You just kind of play with that. You can do it. You can do it. So it looks like I want the bottom of my truck bed to be about right there. So I'm going to just draw that line across. So basically I have a rectangle. I have a longer rectangle and I've got two squares. So when you when you sketch, look at things, no matter what it is, whether it's animals, whatever, you look at it uh, as in shapes. Okay, now we've got this part down here already. We're going to go ahead and start the top here. We're going to start right here either the left or the right side, and you're going to come up and you're going to kind of round this up over around the corners. But first you want to come up straight. So make your two decent lines. Now this will kind of, this is the part that you kind of have to see how tall you want it. I definitely don't want mine that tall for sure. So keep kind of inching up a little by little to see how tall you want that part of the truck, this part here. Now I'm going I kind of got it the way I want it. I'm going to arch it over to the right, come straight across and arch it back down. Now we're going to take a breather here, let everybody kind of get that done. Guys, this is the hardest part, but you guys can, you can do it. Now where I squared this off here, I'm going to just erase and round it off, round off the edges. Because the truck is kind of rounded there. Then in the center here, I'm going to do another rectangle. This is where you put some more wording, if you like. Some people put forward. Mine's not perfectly straight. I'm not worried about that. Now up here, you're going to need you're going to just mimic this edge here. I'm going to come across and down about halfway from your top of your truck line to this line on the truck bed. Come about halfway down. Just like that. Then I'm going to go across. So that's your window there. 
I said I wasn't going to worry about this, but kind of fib once in a while, too. It does kind of bug me sometimes. <laughs> okay. Need to put some lights, so just little circles here and here. Need some mirrors on the side. So mine here on this painting is just coming out kind of an oval, kind of oval, or egg shape actually. Just coming out to the side like that. How we doing? I'm so glad you guys have joined me tonight. Now remember, uh, let me show you while you guys maybe be catching up. I'm going to change the camera here. Um, thanks for joining in. And remember, if you put reindeer in the comment section, then I will, after this is all finished, I will send you a tracer for this cute little reindeer here. And he's got the lights around his neck. He's got antlers, a big old nose. He'd be cute to do with your kids or grandkids, or you might just want to play around yourself. So if you do put reindeer in the comments, I will send that to you later this evening. So uh, thanks for joining in. I gave maybe a few people a chance to get caught back up. So here we go, guys. So we've got the truck bed, the lights, You've got the wheels, bumper, mirrors, back window. So see, that's, that's not too bad. You can breathe a little bit. While we're sketching, let's go ahead and finish this little guy over here, this snowman. So I've got him just, just like you would a regular snowman. Large ball at the bottom and just gets smaller. And like I said, I'm doing it darker. You won't want to do it that dark. And his hat just comes across the top of his head. Just come up almost like another square. Now you can round it off. You can shape it a little different. But this is how we're going to kind of start it. Okay. That's all you want to do on him because you're going to be painting him white here in just a little bit. Now... Uh, if you want to go ahead and do uh, his arms, I just come out from the center section, his midsection, and just kind of come out and just draw some, sketch some arms here, just for fun. You don't want to make them straight. They have kind of look not real. Just kind of curve them a little bit. Some might be larger than others. It's going to come out a little wiggly, a few little wiggly lines. Okay. Okay. So, yours should be kind of like this, guys. You should have your truck bed. Mine almost, it's kind of wide. It almost looks like a Jeep. <laughs> but he won't here in a minute. We're, we'll be painting here real soon. How's everybody doing on it? Did you get it? Get it sketched out? Well, the next thing that we're going to be doing is uh, the truck, actually. So you will need to get your red. And I'm going to use my half inch uh, brush. Let me get my uh, paint here and show you a little bit. We can see a little bit better here. Put my paint in the basket. Hope everybody's having a good evening. Okay, I've got my uh, gray palette and you can see the colors on it a lot better. So I'm just loading up my half inch brush. Now, if this is uh, too large of a brush, then of course, use your round brush or a, uh, another smaller brush. And you don't want to paint in this window part. Leave that just the way it is. So all we're doing is painting red. 
almost all the other part of the truck. Now I had messages from several asking if there would be a replay. This should be playing on my page. I'm, I'm hoping so. Usually does. So uh, I will keep it on my page for you guys. But you know, sometimes Facebook gives you little glitches like a while ago. For me, said something about I was moving too fast. So um, I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> I've never had that one before. <laughs> so they blocked me. I thought, what in the world? Not sure what that means. I've always heard of Facebook jail. Maybe I'm in jail, but you guys are seeing me, so that's all that matters. Guess I'm in jail then. Okay. Let's see, there's just the uh, top part of that truck. Isn't it cute? And I am not worried about. Um, too much about being smooth. Now I will tell you, if you don't smooth your paint out and you're just leaving a lot of ridges, it's going to take longer to dry. No doubt about it. But, uh, you know, try to get it smooth. But it, see how this painting is? I've got some darker red. i got some lighter red. I want it to look old. So I'm not too worried here about if, uh, you know, it's just perfectly red, right? So I'm going to come and I'm going to go and do the little mirrors on the side, paint them. Now we're going to start at the bottom of that truck. You still want to be able to see where the lines are though so you can tell what else you need to paint. Uh, so I'm going to actually going to paint over that light. Kind of easier to do that. I can see where the light's at. You can just paint the rest of it red except for the very bottom. You don't want to paint the, the bumper there. Like I said, don't fret about if there's a few oops here, everybody makes them. This is a, a uh, forgiving type of painting. You don't want a perfectly looking truck here. It's been well loved, been well used. Just trying to look around, see where you might need a little bit more red. Now red is a, it's kind of like blues, the pigment in it, it depends what type of paint you're using, what brand you're using. Sometimes you might need to paint over it again after it dries. Now it will not do you any good whatsoever if you're painting while it's wet. Some people think that if you need to recoat something because it's not dark enough and you paint over it wet, all that does is lift up your paint. So you need to wait till it dries at least fairly good before you uh, paint over it. So if your red needs a little uh, better coat of paint, then do it now when, it, when you can. I'm just kind of gonna work in on my edges a little bit Straightening up some lines here and things. If you need your round brush, use it. Might be easier for you. Whatever works for you, whatever's comfortable for you is what I say. That's what works, right? 
When you get your red the way you want it, wash your brush out. I'm certainly glad that I had my had my phone on because I wouldn't be able to see your comments since I've been blocked. <laughs> I had some people that uh, messaged me today and they've had different things going on and they wasn't going to be able to make it, so you should be able to see this later, too. When I do my lives on my own page, at my own pace, and my own time, and everything, it, it goes just fine. But when sometimes, when you do the events on Facebook, they kind of glitch some. So, apparently we had something going on like that. Okay, your... your uh, truck now you should have that window open right because you want to when you're uh later when we do our tree you want to be able to see part of that window through there right now if you want to get all fancy guys you can put a head in there and a steering wheel and all kinds of things but remember you know i'm going to teach you how to do this with the tree so you might not want to do that because most of that should be covered up right so if you've got the red on here now, then we're going to jump on down and do the fender. And all it is is a light gray. And I have just used uh, my flat brush again. I dipped it in white. And since black is such a dominant color, I mean, I have got, see what I've got on that brush? You can't hardly see the black, right? That's what I want. I just want a very light gray. And I'm just mixing it back and forth on my palette here. Then I'm going to come up and paint. Paint my finger. Just going to come across. Starting to come, start your little truck starting to come alive now. I always think it's it's interesting to see when you add a few more details to it what happens. And remember what I said, make sure that this fender here is wide enough to put the words that you want. This one that I drew tonight is more narrow than this one here, but I don't have to have it this wide. Plus, this is a smaller truck here that I drew tonight than compared to this one, so I wanted it a little bit more narrow. Now underneath the fender you've got your tires and I just dipped my brush in brown and just painted that little rectangle or square the way you want it. You can also, if you want to, you can kind of round, now you can kind of play with it and round the tires a little bit with the corner of your brush. Until I rounded them a little bit. I want mine kind of worn looking again, so I'm not, uh, I'm personally not going to recoat them. Kind of almost looks like uh, mud or something. They went to go get their tree and they got in some mud uh, on the tires. So I'm going to leave those the way they are right now. Okay. Give me a thumbs up or something if everybody's doing good. Or a heart. I know you're busy. <laughs> if you're painting, I know you're busy.
Okay, good, Asher, good. I'm glad you found it, too. Okay, guys. We need to make sure that our red is dry real good before we do the tree. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to jump over here. Well, that's still drying some. We're going to jump over to our little snowman. And uh, I actually will probably try to use my round brush, not my liner, but my round one. And I'm going to go ahead and dip it in my white. And you know that light gray that I mixed up? I want to have some light gray in it too. I don't want my snowman to be completely white. I'm going to have a touch, a touch of gray. Why not? Because what I'm going to do is add some white for highlights. So I'm using just a very light gray for this little guy. Try to cover over, over my lines. That's why it seemed to be better for me to use the round brush. Since I did my lines darker than you guys would have. I have the TV on. I have no idea what it's on, but I leave it for the dogs so they don't hear every little thing. When I go live, it never fails. They're like little kids. They need to go outside to pee. They need to see what they heard outside. <laughs> I thought, okay, we're going to try to muffle some of the sounds outside and You kind of get your, make sure your shape is pretty round. Like I said, I've kind of base coated in a uh, light gray. I'll let that dry some. Okay. The bottom part of him is a little darker than the top. Kind of working on that a little bit. Going right up next to that hat. Okay. As you can see, I'll bring this up a little. I have to tilt it for the light so you can not see with the glare. I've got a black hat on him. I just did it solid black with a uh, brim here coming across and just the top that's black. So let's go ahead and paint that on there. You can change up the shape if you want it. Now's kind of the time to do it. I'm going to round my uh, edges a little bit of my hat corners there rounded them some I like to kind of pull down my brim just a little bit it kind of gives a little bit of character Okay. 
Now, I want to add, since I've made him a little uh, gray, I do want to dip my round brush in just white. And I want to, uh, places, kind of add some just white, especially around the outer edge of him. It looks more like uh, snow, too. It, the gray adds a little bit of depth to your painting. You didn't have to do it like that, but it does. That's what I wanted to show you. Okay. Okay, I kind of like that. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that now? That light is probably uh, shining. Now maybe you can see it a little bit. So he's got a little bit of gray, a little bit of white on him. Now while I have some white on my brush, on the top right of his hat, I'm just touching and kind of squiggling it back and forth, just wiggling it. I want just a highlight of a lighter color. White. You need to add some more, you sure can. Add some more white if you like it a little bit more. Okay. Now you need to come up with a scarf color. In this case, uh, what I did on this one was green, and I just did like a zigzag, a tiny zigzag pattern around his neck. And I came down two little sashes down here. Right? You can do them straight. You can do them uh, however you want. I'm using my round brush again. And just, just doing a, like a zigzag type pattern. Kind of mimics knitting in a way. You're not spending a lot of time on this. You're just giving the illusion that he's got a scarf around his neck. Just crisscross, kind of just crisscross zigzag. Just like that. You want to make it different? You sure can. Again, I want to thanks everybody. thank you guys for showing up tonight. Uh, the first of the year, I uh, want to start doing some more. And uh, so I hope you can join me. Then too, it'll be on my page and you'll be able to see when I do this. Now, I'm going to jump to my liner brush here, or the smallest brush that you have. I'm dipping it in water. And when I use my liner brush for anything, I usually make a puddle off to the side. I take whatever color I'm going to use, pull it off to the side here, and I take my brush and I just drop some water in that paint. Twist it, run it through my brush, kind of keep twisting it. See, when you twist it, it makes a fine point. You can get it as fine as you want it, or you can apply pressure and get it thicker. But I want a point to my brush, and that way I'm going to go ahead and add his eyes. So right underneath the uh, brim of the hat, I'm adding two small eyes. Now, a little trick here, guys, is wash that brush out after you get the two eyes. The next step, and you'll thank me for this sometime, 
sometimes if you go into the eyes and then you go ahead and do the mouth you don't have the right proportion it's just easier if you go ahead and do the nose now and that way you kind of know where to position that that mouth so I'm just doing a carrot color nose this is actually a little red I didn't tell you guys I don't think to bring orange so if you have some red and yellow you can make your orange I didn't uh, tell you orange because you can do the red on here but also um, this snowman is farther back right now if he was right up here up front anything that's closer to you of course you see more detail you see more color so he's kind of faded back there a little bit so I just used a pale red if you want to use orange you sure can so now after we have that nose there we've got the eyes and nose now we know where to position that little smile so here's the smile see so we have the eyes and the nose and I have about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have on my snowman about seven little coals for the mouth. Now, the trick for this one, too, I would recommend starting directly below his nose and doing the very center coal first. Usually, that's the larger one. And then as you go up and outward on each side, it's going to be a little smaller. So let's do that. You're using your liner brush you're using a little bit of paint and water so I'm going to start and I'm just dotting that center right below the nose right then I'm going to go up and out with some smaller ones on each side I've got about three on each side this is easier to do than if you did it another way see okay now I'm going to come down and his little buttons little cold buttons are a little larger and it depends on the size of your snowman I've got mine I've got four I don't want them perfectly round I want it to look rustic so I'm just kind of daubing on there okay now the little guy needs some arms right I'm taking my liner brush same brush this time I'm using dark brown I'm pulling out some brown off to the side here on my palette I'm adding water get my longer brush here I'm adding water to it and I'm just twisting right okay got it to a point and I'm just following along my sketching that I did earlier to create the arms if you need more paint just pick it up if you can't get your paint thin enough then that takes a little practice and uh, just going to add a little bit more water to your paint and while I'm thinking about it guys when I do tutorials I really love for you guys to share your pictures when you're done if you have children painting with you Tell me their first name and the picture, and uh, I will post, or you can post on my page, whatever you would like to do. Okay, we got Snowman. Got his arms, his scarf, and his little uh, coal eyes, and mouth 
buttons. So he's real good. Okay, the next thing, guys, is we're going to do our tree here. Now, listen carefully. These trees can um, grow before you know it. <laughs> I highly recommend you taking your pencil or chalk, whichever one you want to do, and sketching a simple triangle shape first. So let me show you. This tree is sitting inside the truck, right? So this part right here, where the fenders and stuff is, that's the bed of the truck. So you want your tree bottom part to be inside that, not over here, not down here somewhere. So you want it to be right here. Now, I've got my tree angled to the left. You can do whatever you want. You can angle it to the right. You can have two or three trees in there if you like. This is up to you. I'm going to show you how to do this little guy here, though. But the thing is, this is why I highly recommend sketching it first, lightly sketching it. So I kind of want the top of my tree to come out about maybe here, right? Then I want my bottom left of my tree to come over about here. So I'm putting these little tick marks. Then I want my other, the right side of my tree to come out over here. I don't want to cover up my window completely. I like part of my window showing. So if I take my top mark and my left mark, I'm just kind of sketching lightly where I want that tree to be. Then take the top mark again and go down to your other mark. And see now I have, and I'm going to do it darker for you guys so you can see it. But you guys don't do it that dark. I wouldn't. Just do it dark, dark enough that you can see it. Okay. I might want to pull mine over actually a little bit more. This is the time you do it. I didn't care for that line there. So I want to have a little bit more angle. So see, my tree is going to be right through here, right through here. It's not going to be all, all the way over on this way, right? Now, what happens is, why I had you go ahead and trace it is, what happens is most of the time, if I just told you to go ahead and, and grab your half-inch brush and dip it in green paint and start painting, I can almost guarantee that you might not be happy with the result. Because what happens is you start getting bigger and your strokes get a little wider, a little wider. And before you know it, that thing is way out over here. <laughs> so uh, that's why I want you to sketch it first, get an idea how you want it, and uh, then we're going to paint it. So now I am taking my half inch brush and I've got my medium green color. It's almost kind of a darker green. And I'm just running it through my brush. The easiest way I know to do this is hold your paintbrush pretty well up and down straight with the bristles touching that. And just touch the top of your your uh, tree and kind of go out and just kind of go like that all on the outside part on each side you're just pulling that you're touching and pulling it down and out this is what I like for you to do to start off with you get kind of the hang of the brush you get the hang of the movement of the brush and then when you start filling in, you're doing the same brush strokes, but with a flatter brush. You're putting your brush down flat now. Just little choppy, choppy little strokes with the brush. You know, part of painting, sometimes you want brush strokes to show and sometimes you don't. In this case, you want them to show. You want that tree to be rich with texture. So I'm going over my original strokes again.
Make sure you have some, uh, oh, some of your fir tree is coming out to the sides. Don't do just a triangle and keep it straight. That's boring. You don't want that. Now, if you're like me, you probably can see some of your uh, truck, you know, behind that tree. You don't want to do that, I don't think. Uh, so let that dry a little bit. Let it dry, and then we'll go over that area again. Now, it's not going to hurt if you see part of it, but in my case, I see too much. I see the red through here, and I see red through here, so I don't want all of that. It kind of looks hollow. The tree looks hollow, so I don't want all of that showing, so I'm going to wait just a few minutes and uh, let this dry, and then I'll coat it again. Looking while we're letting it dry, I'm looking over your comments and stuff. Remember to, if you want the reindeer tracer, put reindeer in the comments and I will send that to you later. So hey guys, <laughs> now you can see me. Um, oh, at, okay, Asher, what um, he's asking, Asher is asking if, uh, um, about sharing the paintings. So what I like to do is when uh, I host one of these, I'd like you guys to uh, either uh, send it to my business page and I can, or send it to me, I can post them. Uh, you can probably maybe post on here in the comment section and I can take it from that and uh, then I'll post it on my business page guys uh, for people to see and uh, I always like to put the first names of the children if they're painting along too that's always fun sometimes I put them separate so uh, yeah if you would like to uh, me to share if you'd like to share your painting then uh, just when you get it finished uh, then just send it to me that'd be great Okay, how's everybody doing? Good? I'm going to have to go over my grain again. We've been doing it just a tad over an hour. So let me change my camera here again. See, I'm just still doing the same kind of movement. Touching and outward. When you get it to where you kind of like the green, and I do now, there, I can vaguely see a little bit of the red back of the window here, and that's fine. But I don't see as much as I did. So I have still got green on my brush, green paint. I'm going to keep that on my brush, and I'm going to dip just a little bit in white. See, just like that. Um, make me a new color here. So it's a lighter green. This is going to highlight the tree. So in places, especially the edges, I'm going to highlight with this lighter green. If you need to add a little bit more water, water, if you need to add a little bit more white to it, go right ahead. But it's not going to be snow necessarily yet. It's just a lighter shade of green. Now I'm using my half inch brush, just kind of pulling it around. Don't want to go overkill on it, but as you can see, it's got more of a fir tree shape. Now there's different ways. There's different ways to make your uh, pine trees 
There's different brushes you can use. Some people use a fan brush, which is uh, like this. This is a fan brush. I didn't have you uh, bring a fan brush because I thought most people I know would probably have some type of a flat brush. And uh, for this painting, we were going to use uh, the flat brush. Uh, there's other uh, brushes that you can use that uh, they, you do animal fur with too. Those are kind of fun to use, but this I think this one works just fine for what we need tonight. Touch up his little nose a minute here while we're painting. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and let's get our round brush again. Our small round and dip it in black and uh, while we're waiting on that tree to dry we're just going to do our circle here for our lights now you can do it all black or you can add just a little highlight of red in it too if you want And these are positioned on the back of the truck. And a little bit of water, too much water. Have to clean that up. Kind of get them even. Try to get them as even as you can the size wise. Okay. Now on this uh, bumper what I've done is taken a flat brush and I've dipped it really really lightly in a black and I've just kind of uh, maybe add a little bit of some uh, streaks across here. Just barely touch the black. And when I put it in the black, I've I dipped it in black and then I just pretty well just almost, it's called a dry brush, and you just work that off of your paintbrush to where it's pretty dry. You just want a few little streaks and just come across. Now on each side, I didn't do the center, you could, just come across on each side to that center part that you're going to put the wording. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit of a shadow to it. Now I'm going to use my round brush now, and in some of that paint, that black paint, I'm going to load it up, and different people do different things you could do on your tires, just a couple of lines. I've had people put X's on them. I just want you to put something that looks like tread, some kind of tread on there. So I'm just putting some vertical lines here. Three on kind of each side. So I actually six in total. There we go. Okay. See how I just added that? Little tiny bit of white in the upper right hand corner of your, your lights in the back. 
It just kind of gives a little bit of a reflection look. I'm going to twirl that around. Small brush, just a small, small bit. You want just a reflection look. You're going to be adding snow here in just a little bit. Okay. How we doing, guys? Now on the back of your truck here, see here, I've got Santa on mine. You can do Merry Christmas, you can do Santa, you can do uh, Amber's doing good. <laughs> you can uh, put your name up here and leave this blank or you can put uh, your house number here. I've had different people do different things. So think about what you want to put here or what you want to put here right and then let's put that together now if you'd like or if you want to wait you can think about it some and do it later but I'm going to go ahead and do it while I'm waiting on my tree to dry here a little bit now I could use my liner brush and ink it or I can go ahead and use my pen which is uh, much quicker so I use Santa, I did Santa on this one. I think I'm going to do Merry Christmas here. Always makes me nervous with the Sharpie, right? Now, if I was going to use my liner, I'm going to get my paint wet. When any time, remember, you use the liner, you kind of pull that off to the side, your, whatever color paint you're using, get it wet and make it thin. And that way you can kind of write with it. So I'm going to put here with my liner. This takes practice. You're not going to be able to do this overnight. It starts drying up a little bit. You might need to add a little bit more uh, water to your paint. And honestly, if you have a Sharpie, it would be much easier for you. Or a paint pen. Here we go. You can always wait on that if you want to. Do that later. So I kind of change it up a little bit. I've got Santa here and the Wilsons, and on this one I have Merry Christmas and the Wilsons. Now my tree is uh, getting dry now, and so what we have left to do uh, is snow, which is easy. But also, if you want to uh, take your pen and do some line work or your liner work, your liner brush, I'm sorry, your liner brush here, and do it like that. I'm going to show you how to do this. Here again, I've got water and paint. So it's thin. And it's just coming across with a line to show that back end of that truck there. So you're just outlining. Okay. Any other places you want to outline, which I like to do where the mirrors are, Kind of divide that. 
and also the kind of the rear end of the truck. So I want to kind of put some line work in that to show the, the, the division. Okay. You can go around your mirror or your back window, I mean. Kind of depends on the look you want and how confident you are with your liner brush. But like I said, you can use a paint pen. Okay. Just different places that you might want to add a little bit of a, uh, kind of a, gives a shadow illusion. I think it helps overall. Okay, guys, when you get that done, the next thing is uh, we need to add a little snow to this. Now, in this case, the snow on the tree is basically the same way I showed you a while ago. You put a little bit of white on your half inch brush, it's almost a dry brush, not much paint, and you're just going to Put some snow in various places. You can do it like that, like this way, or you can also do it using the half inch brush and kind of tapping in areas on the edge of your brush to where it's kind of thick snow, much like we did the top of the truck. So I'll show you both ways on the tree. I'm going to have, take my half inch brush, I'm dipping it in the white, working it through my brush, I don't have a whole lot on there. It's almost a dry brush. And then in places, I'm just pulling that down. That snow down on the edge especially. Like that. Okay. Now the other way you can do it, you can take your brush, load it up in your paint. Get quite a bit on there this time. Kind of double it in there. Dob, dob, dob. I don't know if double is a word or not. Just double it in there. <laughs> and like we're going to do on the top of the truck, you're just dobbing. You've got quite a bit of paint on your brush and you're just dobbing. So there's a couple ways to apply this snow. You can do that on your tree too in places. Dob, 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 dob. I don't like to do a whole lot, but I do like some. I think it's kind of fun. And basically I'm using the edge of my brush. Very edge, bottom edge of my brush. keep it even you know different places you know it's probably going to be on the top of your tree so from here out you're just putting snow wherever you think you like it you take your half inch brush daub it daub it daub it daub it daub it in the white and I know snow would probably be on top you know of the truck I know it would probably be on the top of the side mirrors just a little bit. It's probably going to be on the top of the lights. And probably have some on the top of the fender. And I'm just kind of touching. You might want to move your brush around so you don't get the same pattern down. And also pile up some snow in places. That makes it look more real. You know, some places might be a little bit more thick in snow. But you're just going to touch here and there snow. You don't, sometimes little less is, is best. Have you heard that? This is a case. Always add more. You can always add more. 
I'm going to put a little snow on top of his hat. Snowman's hat. Maybe even a little bit on his, a couple places on his uh, arms. And then where you divided your blue and your brown, if you did a brown, then I, I add some snow around the base of the snowman. Right on that area where you did the blue and the brown. And we're just daubing, guys. Just daub away. We're getting finished here. You guys have hung with me well. I appreciate you guys coming so much. I love teaching people to paint. Now, this for me is too bare. So, I'm also going to add some snow maybe around the base of the the uh, tires you know you need to add a little bit of something down here now in this uh, sample you can tell I did it it's a small canvas and I did it all the way across you you do however you want you can do it all the way across but the main thing is I want you to do is daub just daub make it a little uneven That's what makes it fun. Uh, you use your creativity and uh, make it fun for you. Now I tell you what else is, is fun to do if you have any kind of glitter. If you um, have any type of that fake snow, you can add that with or on top of this. You have to kind of see some some things are uh, a little different than others. Some products are sometimes uh, sometimes on that fake snow stuff. You have to just paint it white first, like we're doing. Let it completely dry, then uh, go over the top of it with whatever that you want to uh, use uh, to make it glisten or something. There's also products like this here. There's a folk art extreme glitter. Now you want to, uh, if you mix it with your paint, you're not going to see it. So this is a product that uh, after it dries, if you want to uh, kind of glaze, put a uh, flat glaze over the top of the snow with this, it will make it shine a little bit better. It's a Folk Art Extreme Glitter. And uh, this is a silver one. It's really pretty. And I use it on some of the things for my Christmas that uh, I have. There's all kinds of stuff. You know, here's another one that is, uh, this is a folk art. Now, this is gold, but they make it in silver. It's called Glitterific. Glitterific. And that's another uh, good one that you can get. So there's all kinds of products. Um, here is another one. Here is the uh, one that is uh, almost, what do they call this name here? I'm trying to see what the name is. I got this at Hobby Lobby. Mmm. Well, it's it's a clear hologram. There it is. And it is called Glitterific Folk Art Clear Hologram. This is pretty, too, to put over your snow in places. But like I said, sometimes less is best, guys, and you don't want to go crazy with it. You don't. I don't because you can't pretty you can't really remove that stuff. So make sure that you kind of do a little bit at a time. Step back away from your canvas or your, your uh, paper, whatever you're painting on, and look at it again. And uh, make sure that you, you like that before you add any more. So let me uh, do the overhead again so you can see. We've got uh, the snowman here. I've got my truck. The lights and the license plate and the, the uh, snow on the ground. Now, on this canvas, which is a fun thing to kind of do, uh, after it all got painted, after it all got dried, see how I just edged a little bit with black? Now, that's up to you. I'm not going to do it on this here uh, because it's easier to do on a canvas. It just kind of gave it another little rustic feel. And that is just the same thing. You can use a palette knife. You can use a brush and just daub, just daub it around. So it's kind of a hit and a miss. You don't have it solid, 
But that's just another way to kind of decorate the edges. I did the edges too, as you can see. See, uh, that's one way you can. And um, now in my case right here, see I've got a lot of blue up here. I've got quite a bit of blue because I did it uh, like a nine by 12. So in my case here, what I would probably do is I would take some white and probably fill in some clouds here. Just kind of adding some quick, quick clouds around uh, to kind of fill in some of that space up there. Uh, might want to put a star. I mean, you know, you can just kind of, of course it's daytime in here. Um, but you just kind of think about what you want to do to fill in some of this space. And um, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. It's been an hour and a half. I told you an hour and a half. And um, we kind of did that. We did that pretty good, I think. We timed it okay, guys. And uh, now remember, put in your comments, Reindeer, if you guys want this here. Uh, I will put that in um, the... Uh, I will put that in the comment section, okay, guys? So uh, check on that comment section for the link to get that reindeer, okay, guys? And I hope everybody's had a good time. I really do. Uh, Asher, how do you do that? Let's see. Asher, what is it that you was wanting to know? You mean the black? Were you talking about the black? Or, uh, I'm not sure if you were wanting to know about the black on it. Um, I can show you real quick one way. You know, pal palette knives is a whole other lesson, though. But this is just a cheap, cheap palette knife. I got all kinds. Okay, I got, I thought that's kind of what you meant. I got all kinds of palette knives. But you can buy these cheaper ones here. And you can tell this one is well loved, right? So let me show you how to do this, since you asked. You can do it with a brush. Uh, let me do the overhead camera again. Or you can do it like this. So I'm taking my palette knife here. It's a small one. And I'm just loading my palette knife in the black, right? Can you tell? It's just, it just It's got quite a bit on it. You might not be able to see what I'm doing now compared to what I did, but I'm just touching. I'm just going across it flat. See? Can you tell? Just goes and I load it up again, and I just go across it flat. And when you go across that, you're just kind of touching, hitting and missing. When you go across that, all those edges, it is just picking and choosing where it wants to land. You're doing it quick, so you're doing it quick. See if I can do it on that snow. See, it just picks up where some of it is kind of wider. I I didn't tell it to do that. It just kind of did it to itself. And that's what I like about it. So that is how you do it. See, just like that. It gives it a neat effect. I've done lots of paintings like this, especially the ones that I, I definitely want to keep kind of rustic. Then I do that. And uh, you can't really do it on here, on the uh, mixed media. It'd be harder to do, of course, but with the uh, canvas, you sure can. You can do it really well. But I hope that answers your question. Hope that, that answered. And, um, okay, hope so. Well, thank you guys again for being here. And uh, you should be able to watch the replay, guys. So uh, thank you so much, and uh, check back on my page when the next one's going to be, and we'll have some more fun. So I love uh, teaching. I do that, and um, I have a membership called PJs and Paintbrush, Paintbrushes, PJs and Paintbrushes, uh, and uh, for $15 a month, you get tracers, you get uh, paintings, uh, we have a lot of fun in there, too. It's a small group. I've just kind of started it. It's a small group. So it'd be a great time. We'd love to have anybody who would like to be on there uh, in the group. 
and it's $15 a month and you get supply list, you get tracers for things, unless I think that you need to uh, sketch it. <laughs> and then we go through the sketching too, on that too. But uh, uh, you get the paint supply list, you get your brushes, you get everything that you need at the first of every month. That way when we have our meeting times you have it all ready to go. And uh, well, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Paula. Thank you. So guys, like I said, if you want the reindeer with your grandkids or your kids or yourself, put on their reindeer and uh, you will see that link then. So everybody have a good night. Have a very Merry Christmas and much love to everybody. And uh, until we see you again, bye-bye.